you've got to take the patience. So, as you know, i um, done a lot of house painting and um, want to talk about the van, uh, which came up because one summer um, we didn't have my painting vehicle, which at the time was my big uh, Buick station wagon, which I loved dearly because that thing it had the spirit and the feel of the Millennium Falcon, didn't take guff from anybody. and. Uh, we had to get something because um, Matt, all he had uh, was <laughs> some Oldsmobile sedan at the time. And then Dan, all that he had was his father's Firebird complete with glass T-tops, which I really did, did want to show up to a customer's house with a ladder tied to the top of a Firebird with like the words douchebag painters crappily stenciled on the side door. Um, but I decided to go out and find something. So one day Matt and I are driving around and we're looking for vehicles and we pass by this monstrous, um, huge 1984 uh, navy blue Ford Econoline van. And we get off the road, we go up to look at it, it's just $500. And the owner comes over and it wasn't registered so he instead lets us drive the thing around his yard. He had a big yard. And to make it even better, while this is happening, he's, he's in the middle of a family cookout, basically. So we're just driving this large tragedy around his yard as his family members are eating like, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers and mismatched lawn furniture, uh, which may seem strange, but you must remember that we were in a town at the time that was, uh, b that bordered New Hampshire. Um, <clears throat> So I don't know if I want to spend money to get this thing, but then Matt reminds me, he goes, anything that big and moves is worth $500. So we get the thing and now we have the van and every morning would start the same way. You'd have uh, Dan in the back falling asleep in some drop cloths. And then you'd have Matt up front uh, complaining about having to get up early. And then you had me, uh, making sure that, you know, we had the fat boys tape uh, serenading us on the way to work. And um, the van was very fickle. You never knew what was going to break on that thing. It was crazy, uh, which I sh should have realized up front because I told the guy I didn't want to buy the thing unless I could get it, uh, you know, um, to pass inspection. So he's like, all right, no worries. You just visit my mechanic buddy here and he'll get you a sticker. So I go to his mechanic buddy, it was after hours, it was like so like shady. I go over to the guy and he hands me an, uh, an inspection sticker and he goes, look, don't tell anyone where you got this thing. So I take the thing and now I'm driving around on it. And the thing, the van was crazy. Like what, whether it was uh, uh, rear brake lines that just exploded without warning, uh, uh, whether it was uh, the, the, the time a tire blew out when I was doing like 55 on the highway or brakes that you had to pump just right because if you didn't pump my brakes just right, the pedal would go to the floor and the red brake light, warning light, would just go right on. Um, so no matter what it was, the van was always keeping us on our toes. And the other great thing was that I've never had so many cops follow me now, part of it was that at that time in that summer, I had long hair, I had a beard. Uh, also, I had UMass stickers on the back of the thing. Um, uh, also had large rust holes in the back. And these rust holes were right by the exhaust, which is probably why Dan was always falling asleep in the back. So uh, yeah, always had cops following us. It was, it, was, it was just terrible. So at the end of the summer, um, I cut my hair, I shaved my beard, and I decided to take the van off the road. And um, so I just basically parked it in the woods. And my father hated having this thing around, this ogre of a thing around. And so he decided he has to make a purpose of it. So he just packs the back of the thing with firewood, like with enough firewood to create a fire that could be seen from space. It was just absurd and to keep the firewood dry. And a couple months go by and I, I get a weird call from my father and I pick the phone up I'm like, hey dad. And he's like, Chris, uh, we had to get rid of the van. And I'm like, oh, why? And he goes, uh, well, we sort of had a barbecue here the other day. And I'm like, uh, what do you mean by that? 
<laughs> and he goes, well, Mr. Harley from next door came over and uh, said, uh, you know, hey, Connor, uh, your van's on fire. And I went outside and, uh, well, it, <laughs> it sure was on fire. So we called uh, the Boxborough the fire department. They came over here and, you know, they opened up the back and they had to take out all the firewood and your painting supplies. And, uh, you know, whew, boy, it was, uh, it was terrible. But they found out what happened was that a mouse chewed the ignition wires and that started a fire. And inspecting the engine, they found a dead mouse in the engine area. And uh, when you get back, you'll have to see our neighbor, Mrs. Harley, because she went through about a whole roll of film uh, taking pictures of this thing. So, yeah, sure enough, I, I get the pictures from my neighbor and I'm looking through them and like I tell you, it looked like a Belfast car bombing. Uh, it burned down the woods. Um, I mean, you couldn't even recognize the, the, the <laughs> man. It was, uh, it was just completely charred. It was like unrecognizable. Some of the tires exploded. And um, it was the other thing that was uh, it just f thank God, first off, that I had uh, the common sense and the wisdom to remove my fat boy's tape out of there because, man, that would have been heartbreaking. And that next summer that we painted, uh, we were just too cheap to get new painting supplies. So everything that we used was either covered, covered in soot and the drop cloth smelled like smoke. So like we'd come back from work, we'd, you know, look like we cleaned chimneys all day with soot and smoky smell all over us. Uh, so yeah, vans, just don't trust them.